Well, Goody, you mentioned you're at Twickenham. What went wrong for England, mate? Um, everything. Let's just start as we mean to go. Absolutely everything went wrong. And you can look at it in two ways. South Africa were brilliant in how they played, how they approached the game. They dominated every facet of the game. And I actually looked at it and I thought, that's why Jim Hamilton got paid 750 grand a year and had a one-bed flat in Luton for Saris because when, Mar- yeah. when Maratoji was fucked, you had to bring Jim Hamilton on and Will Skelton for the Moors and the scrums because set-piece is king, isn't it? Let's be honest. England Against South got, Africa, yeah. England got absolutely dominated in every facet of the game. It started pre-match, Eddie Jones talking about taking the game to South Africa and they'd mentioned the World Cup final and we're going to fly out the blocks and play at a great pace and try and run South Africa around and, and put pressure on them. Well, none of that happened. The first three times we got the ball, we kicked it up in the air, aimlessly, in my opinion. Um, and South Africa got an easy run into the game and you know we made errors. We were put under pressure by South Africa, but it was the most abject performance I've seen from an England team, probably since I played for England. And even going before that, actually, when I played for England, I wasn't as bad as that, I don't reckon. I beat South Africa at Twickenham once. Um, not per, not not individually, but I came off the bench and made a difference. Um, Do you reckon you'd make this team? No fucking chance, no. But, um, <laughs> geez, it was uh, depressing. It really was. Like... You're at Twickenham, people are moaning about the cost of the tickets that they have done over the last three or four weeks, and then the team put that out there. Think back to what Eddie Jones said pre-Autumn Internationals. He said they want to put smiles on England fans' faces because rugby's in a bit of a dark place in England at the minute after what had happened with Worcester and Wasps. And we've just got more and more depressed, I reckon, during the autumn because it was absolutely shocking. I listened to Manu Tuolangi's interview after the game, um, a man who was, you know, it's his fiftieth cap, and you want him to have a great game and and touch the ball in space and get to run over people. I couldn't see a plan again of how we're trying to play. Um, Manu Tuolangi said after the game in an interview, he said the plan is clear, the messaging and the plan from Eddie Jones is clear. Well, I've watched a lot of ruggers, a lot of other people have. No one can see, and people with greater rugby brains than me are also saying the same thing. Can't see what England are trying to achieve. Um, you know, where do you go with it? The the the, the Smith Farrell axis doesn't work. We've said that now for, for quite some time. Um, you know, you've got to back one of them at ten and have the other one on the bench. Um, you know, Henry Slade, who wasn't in the squad at the start of the Six Nations, is probably England's most exciting player, ball in hand over the last few weeks since he's come back into the squad. Um, you know, we got owned. We tried to match their bomb squad on the bench. Well, you know, Mako. A brilliant player, ball in hand. Everyone knows, you know, his scrummage is not the best. There was, it reminded me of a scrum once at Leicester when Alex Marino, who was our tighter prop at Leicester, when Castro Giovanni was injured and a few other tighter props were injured, we called him the Brown Wings, Mr. Brown Wings, because his head was so far up his ass on a scrum. He was five foot in the air. And Lovely ha- bloke. Yeah, cracking guy. And it happened to Mako Vanapola. Like, Mako was lifting the air. Mal Herber absolutely ate him for breakfast. And it's not just Mako, it's the whole sort of set piece element of it. We were ill disciplined. Johnny Hill, what are you doing after the game? Just going around thinking you're well hard when. You know, you're giving silly penalties away. That reminded me of Jim Hamilton as well, actually, some of those penalties. Um, but I don't know, the whole, everything to do with the game. Kicking was poor. Defensively, we were, we were off. You know, even when Freddie Stewart's dropping high balls, and I love Freddie Stewart, he's probably the best in the world or one of the best in the world at taking the high balls. It's just error upon error upon error. And it goes back to the leadership and Eddie Jones and, you know, it, the coaching turnover. Everything's been muddled thinking um, from Eddie Jones. That the turnover of coaches, because people don't want to work for him, leads to indecision on the field people don't know what they're meant to be doing people are scared to do something because of how he is and it leads down that pathway of of real abject performances and fans booing at the end of the game his comments after the game were really interesting because when they do the press conference and actually i'm a bit different now to how i used to be i watch them and quite enjoy them i feel like you get decent insight they're effectively just doing my job for me by telling me what's happened in the game and and cross-referencing what i already thought but it was interesting listening to him after the game because he was talking about the positives, eh? and then he was talking about, and then he was talking about the World Cup, and what he was saying was 
they've got to look at different players. They've blooded new players. Have we? And it goes back. It goes. But well, this is what I mean. It, well, yeah, they have. You know, a number of players have got caps, haven't they? For example, and other lads. He, have been he's put in. a couple in. He's put Jack Van Port. Yeah, in, Tommy Freeman. Yeah. I know. So they've played Alex Coles as well. We've seen yeah. David Ribbon. So we've seen a few, like a handful of guys. But what really frustrates me, and, the, and again, I've said it a million times and I'll say it again. What has the World Cup got to do with this? It's a test match at the weekend. It's an autumn nation series. It's the six nations around the corner. I just think coaches hide behind losses. And when they say they're experimenting, I, I just think one thing that Andy Farrell said, I'm not just giving you a cap for the sake of it, to see if you're good enough. If you've earned the right to play for Ireland, you'll play for Ireland to win games right now. And that's where I just feel with Eddie Jones. I'm like, are these guys that you're giving caps to, do you genuinely believe that they're good enough to play in a World Cup final? Or are you just giving them a cap to see if they might be? That's just my opinion in terms of that specifically, in terms of handing caps out. I don't like it, never have liked it. The World Cup a year out has got nothing to do with the here and now, in my opinion. If you're England, I suppose, and the expectation is under Eddie Jones and the conversations that he have, uh, are having with the RFU is about winning the World Cup, then that's different. We don't know that that is the case. But the fact that he keeps sticking with, with Marcus Smith-Farrell to a laggy when he's fit, you don't really know who the wingers are. Like he's, he's interchanged them a few times. And you've got the kind of players that we've seen playing in the Premiership and carving up in Europe at his disposal... There's a part of it where it isn't really good enough, is it? Like in terms of the money and the available players that he's got to pick from. And we've had this discussion around Scotland and Gregor Townsend and we're going to get onto Wales and talk about that. New Zealand, like the pressure that they're under in terms of losing a few games. You look at the games that they've lost, like they sh England shouldn't be losing them games. And that is must be the frustration and like Goody said, going back to that, is the style of rugby that they're playing. Like, if you're going to Twickenham paying that much money and you see a man who get the odd ball on the gain line to make a couple of metres, you're like, well, what is this? You know, what, what are we paying to see? At least if you're going to watch the All Blacks or Australia, you're being entertained significantly when, they, when they're running with the ball. But yeah, I, I watched that and it weren't great, was it? No. And you talk about those... Post-match interviews, I'm gonna. you've got to call it out, Jim. So, Eddie Jones' post-match interview, here are some of his quotes. This England team isn't far away. What? That isn't far away from what? We were fucking miles away from South Africa at the weekend, let me tell you. Uh, we're going in the right direction. Really? Because the only direction we were going at the weekend was backwards because we got absolutely pumped. Uh, Andrew, I'm loving these analogies. I'm loving these. Keep going. Uh, well, next one. I'm not happy with the results, but we're building a really good base. What base are you building? A pizza base? base? Camp. A base, base camp. camp. I, like, I, it's absolute drivel. Uh, and he's, the, the last one, he said, we went in there with a good design on how we wanted to play, but it just didn't happen. Okay, so we can all come out with a great design on what we're going to do, but no one's seen anything. And I go back to earlier in the Autumn Internationals where he said, um, you know, it's a mini World Cup. Um, we're going to keep things up our sleeve. Well, that wizard sleeve is absolutely massive because we've played four games We've beaten Japan, who was shocking. We've lost to Argentina. We've drawn with the Old Blacks because of 10 decent minutes and they imploded. And then we got our asses handed to us by South Africa. So I don't even know. Did we get out of the group? I'm not sure. Uh, either way, it wasn't a great Autumn Internationals. And Eddie's talking in riddles. And I understand his speak around the World Cup because coaches tend to work in a four-year cycle around their contracts. And um, you know he can use that sort of rhetoric and... Um, about keeping his job safe you know I'm planning this I'm trying this and that's what it boils down to has anyone got the nuts at the RFU to hold him to account has anyone you know we're seeing this review thing come out again they did a review two years ago and it was like a review of people that you know wanted to stay anonymous because they didn't want to be out there their names out there around who was on the review panel so it's it's you know it's it's poor it, no more, no less. It's absolutely poor. And for the RFU to allow this to happen and how it's got this bad under Eddie Jones when he said, I'm only here for four years and I'm going to pass it on. We're seven years into it and he's got to go. With the review, do you know if senior players are involved like other countries? Because I know that's the case in, in New Zealand. The senior players in the All Blacks, the, they review after a, after a tournament or after a tour. 
Well, Andy Rowe, you only need to look at what came out last week when Bill Sweeney was sat there. It looked like they were in court with the DCMS and they were talking around the demise of Worcester and Wasps. And the guy said to him, literally to his face, you're asleep, mate. You're asleep. That's what the guy is telling the head of the RFU. Now, I know this is a completely different subject, but it is the same people that are going to be making the decision on the growth of England rugby, for example. Again, it doesn't really affect me. It doesn't really matter. I'm just giving a very non-biased opinion. But rugby is in a very weird place at the minute in England. And at the top of that is the RFU. You're looking for England to be a beacon of hope. Like uh, Eddie Jones said, that he wants to inspire the fans. He wants to give them something to shout about, to be spending significant amount of money to come and watch the game. And then on the one hand, you've got Bill Sweeney and his mates. I don't want to call them cronies. It sounds like I'm going too harsh on them, who were literally asleep. They were asleep at work for two and a half years. And now that they've been woken up, they're talking about doing a review, whether or not Eddie Jones goes or stays. But he, he's not willing to say who's in bed with him. He literally is like, the lads are asleep as well. We don't know if they're the same people that were asleep for the last two years or they're different people. Who are they? So I don't know. We don't know, Andy Rowe. Is it someone like, I don't know, a Will Carlin, a Dino, a Dean Richards, an England great. I'm trying to think, a Martin Johnson who's been burnt by England before. I've got no, is it Andy Goode? Is it TMO Andy Goode? I'll be honest, it's not, it's not me. It's not me. But this is the thing though. So they are hiding behind a cloak of uh, secrecy and you know, apparently the people that are on the committee wanted to stay anonymous. Um, so again, in terms of leadership, like you said, Jim, you need leadership and you need someone to say, these are the people that are holding this accountable. And I've said it loads of times, there's no one at the RFU uh, with any rugby nous. You know, Conor O'Shea's there, but I don't know whether Eddie Jones answers to him. I don't think he does. Um, you know, Conor O'Shea's obviously got a big history at Harlequins and sort of top tier coaching, been involved with Italy. Um, but, who are these people that are reviewing something that Eddie Jones is re reviewing to them about the camp and everything like that? Are these people, you know, living and breathing rugby every day or are they, are they just, as Will Carlin put many years ago, one of the 57 old farts on the committee? Now, I'm not saying that is the case, but... But we know it is the case. <laughs> but Jim says it's the case. I saw Austin on... Sunday at Leicester, he was working for BT, and Austin said Eddie Jones is getting sacked this week. So maybe Austin's on the committee, who knows? Um, but I'm sure you probably hear about it if Austin was on the committee. Or maybe the RFU don't want to reveal who it is um, and put those people under pressure. There's too much secrecy, and again, it goes back to the governance of the game, how it's run, everyone's asleep, and I'm pretty good at sleeping, so get me on there. And farting. It needs a complete refresh. And we go back to Razor. I know that Goody's been all over Scotty Robertson. I am as well. It feels like we need someone. I say we, I'm English now, look at me. <laughs> England needs someone <laughs> that is an energizer that just gives everything. Heart. So I'm not saying Eddie Jones doesn't, I'm not, but not someone who's coming in talking about riddles. And I like Eddie Jones, I respect him. Yeah, what they need is an energizer. And I'm not saying that Eddie Jones isn't, like he takes a lot of the flack on himself. You hear him talk about uh, the media, it's all, oh, it's my fault, it's my fault. But you talk about access to players, you talk about hashtag growing the game. We can get into that another time, but frankly, lads, I'm done. I'm dropping the mic, I'm off. Press pause, press stop, whatever it is, I'm out of here. I'm on it, though. And I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, back. Goody, I'm back. <laughs> You're back. Yeah. Welcome back. The last thing I'll say on it, in terms of where can England go, now, I spoke to a few people, obviously, some people are thinking the RFU haven't got money to pay people out or buy people out of contracts. Other people are saying there's plenty of money there to do that if they had the desire and the will. Mike Brown spoke to him at the weekend, saw him after playing for the Barbars for the last two weeks. He said, and he's been in Eddie Jones' environment, he knows these players, he said he's just had the best two weeks of rugby under Ron Nogara and Scott Robertson. And he said those two would be ideal to get the best out of all the talent in England uh, as England head coaches. So, you know, you've got someone of experience there from both sides the coin having been involved with England under Eddie and he gets you know he said they've got to work hard you have to work hard of course you do but you've got to have fun with it as well and I don't reckon there's much fun being had by that England squad at the minute that's it you've got to enjoy it I think they're scared of Eddie Jones and I think you bring in Scotty Robertson and Ron Nogara you're going to work hard but you're going to play hard as well and that brings out success you might not be able to see until Wednesday. Like, I don't know if you saw how funny was their eyes <laughs> yeah. for the team photo for the Barbars. I know it's very different, but Goody, you're absolutely right. 
Like, at, it's fun. You want them to be fun. You want it to be engaging. You want fucking breakdancing. You want eyeball pull after games by the coaches. Bring us it, please. Come on. Like, you can't have this. It's a joke. Do you think Eddie's lost the dressing room? Um, I, well, he, I think what he does is rule on fear. Uh, there's a lot of players in that squad that are fearful of making mistakes, and it comes out in how they play. Um, I don't. Has he lost the dressing room? Players aren't going to come out and say that openly. He's got Farrell as his sort of right-hand man. Farrell, obviously, is a very, very strong character uh, in terms of how he dictates things in that in that squad, which is a very positive thing at times. Um, no one, it's like every coach, right? No one's going to come out really and say anything bad about the coach until the coach is gone. You know, Chris Ashton spoke to him recently about it. He said he came back and was desperate to play for England when he had the whole thing. We joked and laughed about it on here. He left too long to come back to sale because he wanted to play for England again. And that first Autumn Internationals, he got picked, played against the All Blacks. And then he was in camp with Eddie Jones and he said he absolutely hated it. He said it was brutal. It was like ridiculous on him, the body, his family and everything. And he said he wasn't enjoying it, so he didn't want to play for England again. And if that doesn't speak volumes, everyone should be going down to England camp as hungry as you can be to want to pull on an England jersey and perform and try and take England to a, a, as high a place as you can, which next year is a Six Nations and a World Cup. I don't reckon they've got that. Of course, they want to win, but you know, have we got that desire? Um, uh, you know, to go all the way for Eddie Jones. I don't know. He doesn't look like it in, in our performances at the minute, does it? Pod, 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 pod. Rugby pod. <laughs>